Jai Gurudev. Happy day, dear children. Seeking the blessings of Almighty, we will move on to the session. In the last session, we learned about in the last session, we learned about the nutrition in plants. Plants prepare food by themselves and they also depend on other organisms. In this session, we are going to learn about the nutrition in animals. So the major session plan is to learn the steps in nutrition, digestion in human body, digestion in grass eating animals and digestion in amoeba. Then, children, you would have observed quite a number of animals around you. Well, the butterfly and the hummingbird suck the nectar from flowers, whereas python swallows its prey. When you consider the aquatic animals, they filter the food particles floating in the water. So different animals take in food in different ways. Well, but in all these cases, the animals either directly or indirectly depend on the primary sources called the plants. Based on this, we can classify the animals into three categories, herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. Herbivores are animals that depend or eat only the plant materials and carnivores consume flesh material. Omnivores are organisms which take in both plant material as well as the flesh. Okay, even we come under the category called omnivores. Then we will move on to nutrition. As learned earlier, nutrition is the mode of taking in food by organisms for growth and other activities. And when we move on to nutrition in animals, there are five major steps involved in nutrition. That is ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and ingestion. What happens in ingestion? Ingestion is the process where we consume or take in food. Okay. So, we ingest the food. Next is the digestion where a mechanical and a chemical break breakdown of food into simpler and soluble substances happen. In absorption, the digested food is taken up by the circulatory system and it is carried to the various parts of the body through cells. And in assimilation, the absorbed food is used by the body to generate energy. Finally, the undigested food or the base material is removed from the body. Next, we will move on to the parts of the human digestive system. There are various parts involved in the digestion. The first part is the mouth or the buccal cavity. Mouth or the buccal cavity. The next one is the esophagus, otherwise known as food pipe, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus. When we put all these parts together, we can call them as elementary canal or the digestive tract. And the major glands involved in digestion are the salivary glands, pancreas and liver. Before learning the digestive system or digestion, we will have to know the parts of the buccal cavity. We have two jars in our buccal cavity, the lower jaw and the upper jaw. In our lifetime, we will have two sets of teeth. The first set is the milk teeth and the second set is called as the permanent teeth. The milk teeth starts growing at the age of eight months in infants and it lasts up to seven or eight years and then they fall off. When the second set of teeth called as the permanent teeth grows. So 
these permanent teeth last for a longer time till our death. Well, the permanent teeth are 32 in number. The permanent teeth is classified into two, four types. They are incisors, canines, premolars and molars. Now, you can see there are broad sizzle shaped teeth present in the front of our mouth. See, these are broad teeth front in, present in the front part. They are almost sizzle shaped and they are used for biting the food. Four numbers of incisors are present in the upper jaw and four numbers are present in the lower jaw. So, incisors are scissor shaped and they are used for biting the food materials. They are used for biting the food materials we consume. Next, behind the incisors, you have the canines. The canines are sharp and pointed teeth. The canines are sharp and pointed teeth used for cutting and tearing the food materials. The canines are sharp and pointed teeth which are used for cutting and tearing the food materials. So, there are two canines in each jaw. Behind the canine, you have the premolars. They have a larger surface area. See, they have a larger surface area when compared to the canines or the incisors. So, this larger surface area is used for grinding or chewing the food materials. Four premolars are present in each jaw. So, we have around eight premolars in our buccal cavity. Behind the premolars, you have the molars. See, they have a larger surface area which is again used for chewing and grinding the food materials. So, there are six molars present in each jar and in both the jars you have around 12 molars. Children, these permanent teeth cannot be replaced. So, immense care should be taken in maintaining the permanent the enamel present in the children are thinner when compared to the adults. So, you have to brush your teeth twice on a daily basis regularly. If there are food particles left in your mouth, that is in between your teeth, what happens? Bacteria act upon them and convert them into acids which will cause cavities and lead to tooth decay. So, better brush your teeth on a regular basis twice a day. Moreover, don't take very hot or cold food which will affect your teeth. Next, we will move on to a taste organ called as a tongue. This tongue, you can see the tongue, right? So, this tongue is a fleshy or a muscular part fixed to the floor of the buccal cavity. When your mother prepares some yummy food, what happens? You taste it. You can taste the sweetness at the tip of the tongue. How is this possible? This is possible only through the taste buds present in the tongue. So, these are the taste buds present here and there in your tongue. So, the tip of the tongue will give you the taste of sweetness, then saltness, sour and bitter. Thank God you will taste the bitterness only after some time. Okay. So, this is the structure of the tongue where you have the taste buds which will help you in knowing the sweetness or saltness of the food you take. So, this is the write-up about the buccal cavity which I have explained you earlier. Then you have the tooth care and now we will move on to the human digestive system. In the human digestive system, the first process is the ingestion. So, ingestion is taking in food. We ingest the food through our mouth. Okay, we ingest the food through our mouth. Children, the digestion can be well explained with the help of a diagram. I will move on to the diagram. You can later on go through the 
write-up which will give you a better knowledge. Now we will move on to the diagram. So this is the diagram where you have a clear idea about the parts involved in digestion. So this is a digestive system where you have the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and rectum. So this is the liver. Now the first step is ingestion where we ingest the food into the mouth or the buccal cavity where we have the teeth. So the teeth helps us in cutting and grinding as well as chewing the food materials. So here saliva is secreted which moistens the food. Well, the tongue also helps us in rolling and churning the food. Okay, so here the saliva which is secreted by the salivary gland will break the starch into simpler substances. So here the starch is broken down into simpler substances. Then it moves into the esophagus or the food pipe. Children, here digestion doesn't take place. That is here in this esophagus, digestion doesn't place doesn't take place. So what is the purpose of this esophagus? The food slowly enters the esophagus by a wavy movement, by a wavy movement. That is, it slowly contracts and relaxes. So what happens? The food is slowly pushed downwards. This movement is called as the peristalsis. This movement is called as the peristalsis. Slowly it is pushed down through the esophagus and it reaches the stomach. So this is the stomach. The stomach is the widest part in the digestive system. So this is a stomach and it is the widest part in the digestive system. It is a thick bag like structure almost like a flattened you. Yes children it is almost like a flattened you. So inside the stomach you have the gastric juices secreted. What do you have here? You have the gastric juices. So the gastric juices involves enzymes. So in the enzymes act upon the food that reaches the stomach and break the proteins into simpler substances. The enzymes act upon the food that enters the stomach and break them down into simpler substances. Exactly the proteins into simpler substances. You also have the secretion of hydrochloric acid which will kill the bacteria that enters the stomach along with the food. So the purpose of hydrochloric acid is to kill the bacteria, unwanted bacteria. Be mindful, unwanted bacteria will be killed by the hydrochloric acid. So now you will have a doubt. Ma'am, when it is killing the bacteria, will it not damage the stomach or the walls of the stomach? No, it will not damage because the walls of the stomach, see the walls of the stomach will have a layer called mucosa which will protect the stomach from damage. Okay, so the partially digested food in the stomach slowly enters the small intestine. So it enters like this and here you can see the small intestine. So the small intestine is the longest part in the digestive tract. It stretches from 6 to 7 meters in length and it is kept in the form of a coiled structure. See it is arranged like a coil. Can you view this? So this is a small intestine and it is arranged in the form of a coil. It's quite long and it stretches from 6 meters to 7 meters in length. Okay. Now what happens in the small intestine? Complete digestion happens only in the small intestine. Some amount of digestive juices are released into the stomach, uh, released into the small intestine and it acts upon the food. Children, where does this digestive juice come from? The digestive juice come from the liver and the pancreas. So this is the liver. The liver is present on the right side of the upper abdomen in the human body. So this is the right side and this is the upper abdomen in the human body. It is almost like a triangle reddish brown in color. So the liver secretes 
a juice called bile juice what is it it secretes a juice called bile juice not like our uh, carbonic juices like uh, fanta or something else it secretes a juice called bile juice this juice is collected and kept in a sac like structure see it is kept in a sac like structure called as a gall bladder what is this this is the gall bladder green color structure is called as a gall bladder so the bile juice is stored in the gall bladder so what happens this bile juice is capable of breaking the fat into simpler fatty acids and glycerol so the process of breaking fats into fatty acids and glycerol is called as emulsification this is very important well so emulsification takes place only because of bile juice so bile juice plays a vital role in digestion then we'll move on to pancreas see you can see a small creamy layer here below the stomach this is the stomach and below the stomach you can see a small creamy layer so this is called as the pancreas pancreas secretes the pancreatic juice which plays a vital role in digestion they reduce the carbohydrates to glucose fats into fatty acids and proteins into amino acids so the digested juices from the liver and pancreas are released into the small intestine which acts upon the food received from the stomach okay now this reduced food which is digested and it is kept in the stomach is ready for absorption what happens it is ready for absorption how the absorption is happening in the stomach a uh, small intestine see in the small intestine you have small finger like projections called villi there are around 1000 numbers of villi present in the small intestine the major function of the villi is to increase in size it will increase its size and absorb the digested food material that is they will absorb glucose fatty acids and amino acids okay they will absorb the digested food material so the process of absorbing the digested food materials will be called as a absorption so absorption takes place in the small intestine and the major role is played by the villi okay in singular we used to call it as villus well children now the absorbed food is later on assimilated how the absorbed food is utilized by the body parts again the villi plays a major role the villi in turn is connected with blood vessels by capillaries by small capillaries okay so the villi passes or transports the digested food to the blood vessels and it reaches the cells of our body and it is utilized for various purposes we learn how assimilation is taking place children the carbohydrates are reduced to glucose the glucose reaches the cells via the blood vessels in the cells with the presence of oxygen glucose is broken down into carbon dioxide and water with the release of energy so this release of energy is used for various activities well the fatty acids and glycerols are stored under the skin as food reserves or energy reserves what is that the fatty acids and glycerol are stored under the skin as energy reserves and the amino acids which are reduced from the proteins are utilized for the growth and maintenance of our body parts okay so the amino acids are used for the growth and maintenance of the body parts so complete digestion happens in small intestine absorption is happening in small intestine as well as assimilation is also happening in the small intestine well now what happens the undigested food 
enters slowly the large intestine. So, see you can see a border like structure. This is the large intestine. A little dark yellow in color. This large intestine is comparatively smaller to the small intestine. It is wider but it uh, stretches to only around 1.5 meter in length. What happens in this large intestine? The undigested food is present in the large intestine. Now, some amount of water and salts are absorbed from the undigested food and it is pushed into the rectum. So, it is pushed into the rectum. This is a rectum. From the rectum, it passes to the anus where it is removed in the form of fecus from time to time. So, this is all about digestion taking place in our human body. Well, I have given a write-up about the digestion in the human body. You can go through the slides from where food enters to the buccal cavity, moves to the esophagus, then it moves to the stomach, followed by small intestine, then liver and pancreas act upon the food in the small intestine, then the food is pushed to the large intestine after absorption and assimilation and finally it is digested. Children, I have given a good explanation with the help of the diagram. You can follow the slides for further knowledge about digestion in human body. Next, we will move on to digestion in ruminants. You will wonder what is this name called ruminants? Have you all ever seen cattle chewing the food children? Simply they will not have the food in their mouth. When they are relaxing, when they are relaxing what they will do? They will chew. Blindly they will be chewing. You will wonder what do they chew? Do they have any bubble gum in their mouth? No. They don't have any bubble gum in their mouth. They simply chew. Why do they chew is a question in your mind. I will tell you why. Cow or any cattle, okay, what they do, they eat grass very quickly. In a hurried manner, they take the grass. They eat the grass. So, in the buccal cavity, the grass is grinded into a pulp and it is sent through the esophagus. Again, here also, a rhythmic uh, movement is taking place and from the esophagus it reaches the rumen. In cattle, the stomach of the cow or the cattle is divided into four chambers. That is, the first chamber is the rumen, the second one is the reticulum, third one is a massa and fourth is the obamassa. Okay, then you have the small intestine, large intestine and etc. Okay, so the food ingested, that is the grass, in, grass which is ingested in the mouth is grinded into a pulp and with uh, the secretion of saliva, it is moistened and it is taken into the esophagus by peristalsis and it reaches the rumen. So, this is the first chamber of the stomach called rumen. In the rumen, some bacteria act upon the food. Okay, they act upon the food. Children, you have to understand, it is very difficult to digest grass because they are rich in carbohydrates which has a good amount of cellulose. Digesting cellulose is not an easy job. So, what happens? Kind of bacteria which is present in the rumen secretes an enzyme called cellulase which will break down the cellulose into simpler substances. So, breaking down of cellulose happens in the rumen. Then again, when it is broken down into simpler substances, it moves back by antiperistaltic peristalsis and reaches the second chamber called as a reticulum. Okay, second chamber called as a reticulum. Here, 
again it is formed into a ball like structure it forms into a ball like structure and it is also called as a cut that is the partially digested food which is semi solid in nature so this cud is again sent back to the mouth by antiperistalsis what is that by antiperistalsis it reaches the mouth okay it reaches the mouth imagine children the food again reaches the mouth and when the cow relaxes during its leisure time it will chew the food chew the food because this chewing is done again and this rumination is happening in these animals these animals are called as the ruminants well because the food is taken inside the stomach and it is brought back again to the mouth for chewing or rumination it is these are called as a ruminants okay the animals which ruminate are called as a ruminants now once the food is completely grinded and made into a paste again it goes back and it directly reaches the masum that is the third chamber so see the blue color arrow coming here okay so this is the masum from the mouth after complete grinding it directly reaches the third chamber called as a masum now here it is again partially digested and the necessary water is absorbed and it is pushed into the mass and it is pushed into the fourth chamber called as a abomasum abomasum okay so from here what happens again digestion is happening so this is the true stomach in the ruminant so this is the true stomach in the ruminant where digestion takes place well so here the food is completely digested and the necessary nutrients are absorbed and later on sent into the intestine and slowly it moves to the large intestine and later on it gets digested so i'll just give a recap of digestion in ruminants once again children the cattle intake grass in a hurried manner they partially chew the uh, grass it is made into a pulp saliva is secreted it's mixed with the grass and what happens it is slowly moving to the esophagus and it directly reaches the first chamber called as a rumen here in the rumen the cellulose is broken down by an enzyme called cellulase and then it is sent again back to the second chamber called as a reticulum here it is made into small balls and the food present in the reticulum will be called as a cud it is a semi solid food half uh, digested it is sent again back to the mouth by antiperistalsis okay it reaches the mouth see the pink arrow it reaches the mouth again grinding happens it is completely chewed grinded and sent back directly to the third chamber called as omasum here partial digestion takes place and the necessary water is absorbed later on it's pushed into the fourth chamber called as a bimasum here it is a true it is a true stomach and digestion takes place so here only the complete digestion take place and the nutrients are absorbed assimilated and the unwanted food is slowly pushed to the intestine and later on to the largest intestine and eventually it is eventually it is digested out so this is all about digestion in ruminants since these animals ruminate the food they are called as ruminants okay they chew the food by bringing them back to the mouth they are called as a ruminants so the, the digestive process in ruminants is quite complex when compared to other animals okay so this is the write up about the digestion in grass eating animals already i have explained the digestion in grass eating animals with the help of a diagram you can go through the write up for enriching your knowledge
So these are the stages of digestion which I have, which I have explained you earlier. Next, we will move on to digestion in amoeba. Children, you are all familiar with the name amoeba because in your lower classes, you have learned that amoeba is a microscopic, microscopic organism. Well, why do we call it as a microscopic organism? Because it is very small in nature and it has a single cell. So, it is also called as a unicellular organism. And it is found mostly in the fresh or pond water. Okay. Now, this amoeba has a cell membrane and it is also having a dense nucleus inside it, inside the cell with small bubble-like vacuoles in the cytoplasm. So, amoeba is a unicellular organism. It has a cell membrane and it is rounded with a, it is having a dense nucleus and few bubble-like structures called as a vacuoles. It frequently changes its position by using its false foot called as a pseudopodia. So, this is the structure of amoeba. It is shapeless. It will always change its position from time to time. So, it has a cell membrane a dense nucleus, then it has some small vacuoles inside. So, when it is going to move from one place to another, it will use its false foot, otherwise known as a pseudopodia. What it will what it will do when it is moving from one place to another? It will protrude its pseudopodia and it is moving. Well, when it finds or senses some prey, it will enlarge or stretch its pseudopodia and engulf the prey by creating a food vacuole like this. See, it is stretching the pseudopodia and what is happening? It is engulfing the food by creating a food vacuole. Later on, in this food vacuole, some amount of digestive juices are secreted. These digestive juices later on break the food material into soluble simple and soluble substances which can be taken by the body of amoeba by diffusion and the undigested food will move out of the cell okay will move out of the cell through the cell membrane so here you can see the structure of amoeba the amoeba doesn't have a proper shape. It has a cell membrane, nucleus and it has some vacuoles in the body called as a food vacuole. Later on, when it wants to move or transport from one place to another, it uses its false foot called as a pseudopodia. For engulfing the prey also, it uses the pseudopodia creating a food vacuole. And inside the food vacuole, it releases some digestive juices which act upon the prey and it is converted into simple and soluble substances which will be diffused into the body parts of amoeba for further activities. So, this is all about the digestion in amoeba. The undigested food will be moved out or it will thrown out from the cell membrane or through the vacuoles. Well, children, <clears throat> I have not given you a slide. Generally, I used to give you a slide where I used to give you the concept map or the mind map where we'll have a summary of all the topics we did. In this session, I'm not going to give you a mind map or a concept map because that work will be done by you people. Next time when we meet, I will be talking about the mind map which you have prepared. This is to develop your knowledge about the topic. I have also included a review zone where you can work out and enrich your knowledge. Well children, thank you.